scientifically ranking every Pokemon trainer in Generation 1. I've been super interested in this, and I'm just going to dive in into it. In my last I... video on scientifically ranking the Pokemon Red trainers, I devised a system that let me pit enemy trainers against each other using the actual AI from Pokemon Red. I then ran a giant round-robin tournament of all the trainers and ranked 87, them- 87,000 battles! That is ridiculous! Based on their performance. If you haven't seen the original video, I definitely recommend checking it out. While it took a while for the YouTube algorithm to catch on, the reception from- Oh my god, listen, as a YouTuber, I absolutely love seeing that big spike upwards. That's how you know a video gets into the algorithm. Like, when we see, like, if a video goes into the algorithm and goes out, like, you don't just get, like, a steady line of views forever. It's, it'll be like, boop! And it'll immediately be suggested to, like, a gorillion people, and then it'll stop. They'll stop suggesting it. It's so weird. That's why no one understands how the YouTube algorithm works, because it just is random. It's like a random number generator that just spits out videos the randomly. YouTube algorithm to catch on. The reception from actual humans was overwhelmingly positive. I actually think I saw this video, his original video, when it was on like 5,000 views as well. So I was before the algorithm got For in with it. I'm very grateful. A number of these comments had some quite willful requests, falling into two main categories. The first wanted me to do the entire project again, but this time in Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black, White, Black 2, White 2, X, Y, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Sun, Moon, Ultra Damn, Sun, I Ultra love Moon, this beat. Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, Sword, Shield, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, or Legends Arceus. The second type of fire. request would point out some issue in my methodology and suggest I run the tournament again with the same combatants in the same game, but fixing any number of issues. Now, I would love to do a tournament in one of the later generations, and I definitely plan to tackle one or more of them someday, but considering how much time and effort went into running the tournament for- I'm sorry, can I just say this is really cool as like a YouTuber because I, I think he had to model all of this and set it up himself. Like, the amount of effort that went into this video is truly spectacular, and it's around on things that you wouldn't even imagine. Like, you see all this and you're just like, oh, it's just sprites. But he had to place these, One right? Game. The second choice seems like perfect low-hanging fruit. So, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll fix all the issues with the original tournament, run the whole thing again, and put out a quick follow-up video. It shouldn't take much time at all. Oh god, it's been a whole year! It took a what year for the time? sequel to come out? What have I been doing with my life? <sighs> feel like we can all relate <sighs> to that. Oh well, better late than never. I'm Welcome glad he did this, because I feel like this World is the quintessential Redux. version of this. Scientifically ranking the Pokemon Red Trainers again. Let's go! By the way, as always, there are convenient timestamps in the description. If some parts of this video don't interest you, feel free to skip around. That's permission! I've so just been given permission to skip. First, we'll fix all the bugs that I can think of in the original tournament's code. Then, we'll make a number of enhancements that people have suggested. Most notably, we'll be scaling the Pokemon so they're all level 50. This is the most important part, I think. Like I said well, before we started this reaction, the levels for the Pokemon were all the original levels, so it really didn't make any sense, and there was no way that any of the lower level trainers could actually win. Feasibly, the only logical conclusion is that the champion is going to win because they have the highest level, but in this one, they're all level 50, which means you're gonna get a much different result. That's why I'm interested in this one. At this point, the video begins to explain all the changes made from the previous tournament, but since I didn't really have much to contribute in terms of my reaction here and the fact that it's really cool information that isn't entirely necessary to understand this video, I think it'd be cool if you went and checked out the original video. I, I wanted to keep this uh, reaction a little bit short down and I didn't really have a whole lot to say there, but definitely please go and check out the original video if you are interested in coding or anything like that because it is really, really, really cool stuff that you definitely need to see. The link is in the description. Basically what you need to know is there was an original test that did not balance the levels. Now the levels are balanced and there's going to be a difference shown between this and the original test. It's time for the Ranking of trainers and also the ranking of kings. Apparently, that's a good and to anime. Start the ranking. The Here we go. Cards this time around are pretty similar to last time. The only two major differences to point out are that they now include the chain. Ah, yes. Worst loss, D plus, uh, last two. Okay, uh, battle number 1093. <laughs> Engine ranking from the previous tournament, as well as hash IDs for the greatest upsets, in case you want to watch those battles yourself. Starting at the very bottom in F tier. Look! 
Let's with a mere go! 443 AOS, we find not the first rival battle as before, but instead Fisher number 11, whose team consists entirely of two Magikarp. Although oh, they do know <laughs> He has two magic up. Oh, that's really unfortunate. They even no tackle. They do no tackle. It's not enough to help Fisher number 11, who ended up winning only 11 battles in the entire tournament. Okay, to be fair, still being able to win 11 battles with just Magic Cop is kind of insane, though. Passing by a number of unremarkable bug catchers, in D minus tier, we find our first major upset in the rankings. Our good old friend Juggler number 5 from Victory Road. What? Juggle number five, right at the bottom. He's a victory roll. This dude has a Mr. Mime. He literally is a psychic type. Biggest throw of the century. Psychic types are broken in Gen 1. How are you losing? You know Idiot. the one with a single Mr. Mime that only knows double slap. That's why he loses, because it only knows double slap. Why does your Mr. Mime only know double slap, you idiot? In the original tournament, he was able to coast on the fact that his Mr. Mime was level 48. But that's no longer an advantage with the levels flattened. Losing juggler number five, 166 spots in the ranking. Jesus Christ, absolute degenerate dropping down. Pretty quickly though, we do reach the first rival battle. This time, it's the Bulbasaur in the lead. Probably a- Okay, so we got the first rival battle here. That's not bad. I love how this is laid out, by the way. Showing the cards go along. It's absolutely beautiful. Again, because of Bulbasaur's dual typing, earning himself a spot in D tier. Sorry, Bulbasaur, I love you. That, we find a rather curious trainer, Fisher number nine. Fisher number nine? Don't talk to me about Fisher number nine. The side effect of flattening the levels is that, where in the original tournament, ranking correlated quite nicely with average level, now it correlates with party size. Generally speaking, the more Pokemon you have, the better you do in the ranking. Unless you're Fisher number nine with six Magikops. Brilliant. As we make our way through the list, I'll be pointing out some exceptions that prove the rule. Like Fisher number nine here, who is the lowest rank trainer with a full team of six. To be fair, there's not that many trainers in generation one that have a full team of six. In fact, there's very, very few. In fact, he's one of only three battles in the entire game against full teams of six. Like I just said, dude, I swear I did not pre-watch this video. I promise I did not pre-watch. The other two, both being rival battles. Like his compatriot in F tier, the all Magikarp strategy proves ineffective. What? I thought it would be such a good strategy, too. They're such strong fishes. Black Belt <gasps> number four in D plus tier is another big mover, together with his single primate, losing 144 spots in the ranking. Number 343 three fell off harder than Halo Infinite. Sorry, boys. That's not as bad as Black Belt number seven, though, who lost 216 with his lone Machoke. Oh, 216 spots from the last one. By the way, those down arrows and losing places is comparison to the first tournament that they did when the levels were not averaged, if you're wondering. The second set of rival encounters are a bit spread out. We just passed the Charmander rival, and the Squirtle rival is right here, but the Bulbasaur okay. is a little ways to go. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, just over 300. Only two Pokemon as well. Pretty good. He went up 79 places. You can see it right there. That's pretty good. In C tier, we find perhaps the saddest trainer of the entire tournament. Here we go. The sad one. Minus 244 places. Gentleman number four. Sad guys. He died. He actually died in between filming the two videos, so he wasn't able to be present in the second one. Standing alone with his trusty primate, lost more places in the ranking than any other trainer, dropping by 224 places. 224 places from the first tournament. It's hard being a gentleman out here. You're just trying to be nice to the ladies. Put on your fedora, go outside. Same lady, hold up, open some doors. But the ladies, they only want big muscly men that are douchebags to them. Let me tell you, it's hard out here, ladies and gents. It's hard. Not long after, we find the first gym leader, Brock, who's gained a... Brock! What are you... Oh, he got... He went up 80 places. Okay. Respectable 81 places in the ranking. It makes sense that early gym leaders like Brock would gain a boost in the ranking. They have access to the special AI routines associated with unique trainers, granting them the ability to use items. And their Pokemon have special moves that other Pokemon of the same level wouldn't have. Without being restricted by their low levels, Brock's Pokemon finally get a chance to shine. 
Unfortunately for him though, he does still only have two of them. So at the bottom of the gym leader rankings, he remains. Damn, sorry Brock. That is confirmed that Brock is unequivocally the worst gym leader in Kanto. Also in C tier, we find junior trainer female number 11, who took part in the third longest battle in the tournament against Erica of all people. While I did find that there tended to be longer battles this time around by virtue of the fact that most Pokemon had more HP to work with, there were actually no endless battles like last time. The thousand turn limit from the original tournament never kicked in for any battles. No 1000 turn games, let's go! God, that'd be a nightmare to get through. Look, we're getting into C plus now. Here is Rocket number two, notable for being the first trainer to gain more than 100 places in the ranking. Damn, and all he has is, what does it have? He has a Sandshrew, a, a, a Rattata, a, and a Zubat right there, you see that? Uh, he gained 111 places, W. W moment right there for Mr. Rocket Boy. His team has three Pokemon, Sandshrew, Rattata, and Zubat, which were only level 11 in the original tournament, but now are able to make a good showing with a relatively diverse team composition. I love this music, man. This is such a good, this is solo, such a well-produced video. B minus, in baby! In B minus tier, we find swimmer number 11, who lost in the third greatest upset of the tournament against bug catcher number three, the second lowest trainer in the ranking. But wait, as you can see, he actually beat Giovanni. <laughs> this dude beat Giovanni and this random swimmer took down the mafia, baby. Let's go. In the original tournament, the bug catcher's Weedle would have been level nine but now powered up to level 50, it's able to defeat much more impressive foes. Even then, it took some luck. The swimmer's first horsey nearly takes out the Weedle, but instead of dealing the final blow, it spammed a bunch of non-damaging moves to no avail. The swimmer's second and third horsey, as well as their Seedra, all do nothing but spam agility, while the Weedle slowly chips away at them with poison damage. Idiots. At the bottom of B tier, we find the lowest ranking Cerulean City rival, the one with the Charmander. Oh. Ah, oh, Charmander at the bottom. Massive L for the Charmander fans out there. Though it did go up 100 places in the rankings, so that's pretty Once good. Again, it will be a while before we see the others. Perhaps more interestingly, though, B tier is also home to channelers number 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 20, and 21. Dude, every single channeler is here. There, there must, there's gotta be a reason for this. With the level balancing system in place, these 15 trainers are all now exactly identical, having a party consisting of a single now level 50 Ghastly. That's why! I knew there was a reason for it! It's a testament to the soundness of the ranking system that these 15 identical trainers all placed within 25 ranks. The only outlier being channeler number eight, who we'll just say got lucky today. Channeler number ah, two okay. also gets the honor of having partook in the second longest battle of the tournament against beauty number one in B plus tier. Wait, a beauty number one? Is that just an oddish? There's nothing particularly notable about this battle. The beauty was merely able to stall it out by using annoying moves like rap, which ends up dealing basically no damage, and stun spore. Even when the ghastly is able to attack, it also deals very little damage. That poor ghastly. The Bellsprout wasn't able to heal itself. So this battle ended in due time. Oh dear, Jesus Christ. Dude, Bellsprout's gen one sprite is ugly as sin. Anyway, in between all those channelers lies the Squirtle rival with still no Bulbasaur in sight. Ooh, Bulbasaur up higher. Nice, good, good, good. But then there's beauty number 14, who brings us the longest battle of this tournament against swimmer Great. number 11 from back in B minus. I think it took 953 turns. Again, combine that with the fact that the swimmer has four Pokemon in their party, all with the same set of stalling moves, and the beauty has to fight for over 50 minutes to secure her victory. 50 minutes? No, it doesn't tell you how many turns was in it. Oh, man. Near the start of B. Surge? Wait a minute. Surge is Plus, below Misty? we find Lieutenant Surge. He's gained a respectable 62 places in the ranking, but at the cost of now ranking below Misty. Oh, also that's embarrassing, here, mate. We find hiker number three, who's gone up a remarkable 191 places. I think the reason why Surge was so low ranked is because he basically can't do anything to rock and ground types and hikers and things like Brock and all of those characters with Geodos and Onyxes and Sandshrews are so common that he just ran into too many of them and he couldn't do More anything about any it. any other trainer. His party has four Pokemon, all originally level 13, three of which are Geodude. Another fun fact about Hiker number three is that he partook in the fourth longest battle of the tournament. His opponent was himself. Trust nobody, especially not yourself. Watching the video, it's pretty clear what made this battle last for over 30 minutes. By the way, since people asked last time, self battles don't affect the ranking. They're just for fun. After that. <laughs> for fun, yeah. Cause attacking a Geodude with tackle for 30 minutes is super fun. We find Pokemaniac number three 
who lost in the second greatest upset of the tournament against Beauty No. 3 from back in D-minus tier. As you can see, the Pokemaniacs team of Slowpoke fall one by one to an endless barrage of barrage from the Beauty's Execute. We also find the first exception that proves the rule from the other end. Juggler No. 7, here in B-plus tier with his lone Hypno, is the highest ranking trainer with only a single Pokemon in their party. They had Psychic though, so that's still pretty trainers good. There's on, no dog we'll type in this game. Two. Next up is Misty! Misty he's gained a very impressive 138 places, followed by an even more embarrassing trainer than the Pokemaniac, Cool Trainer Female Number 6, who managed to lose against the very first rival encounter of the game, the Bulbasaur rival from Yeah, good job, idiot cringe. She has a Venusaur? Since D when? Tier. This is the greatest upset in the entire tournament. How do you lose when you have the bit the bigger boys? It's the rival's Bulbasaur against the cool trainer's Ivysaur and Venusaur. The Wh cool trainer falls into the what? classic Bulbasaur trap. She tries to spam Poison Powder because Poison is super effective against Grass. But since Bulbasaur is also part Poison type, the move does nothing. The rival is then able to slowly chip away at its evolution's HP with Tackle securing the victory. Imagine losing to the baby version. You know, maybe Ash was actually right. Maybe we shouldn't evolve our Pokemon because apparently if you evolve them, they just get dumb and, and, and spam poison powder on Pokemon that literally can't do anything with. Bruno, the Elite Four, just barely scraping the top 50. I thought he was supposed to be the top four in the entire country. Turns out he's barely in the top 50. Ooh, Definitely out of place painful. considering we've only seen three gym leaders so far. Yo, we're gonna get a new Elite Four here. We're about to find out what the new Elite Four of Kanto is. Nevertheless, shortly after, we find Erika and Koga, all nicely sorted for us. We okay. also find the lowest ranking SSN and Pokemon Tower rivals. Dude, that's SSN rival? It's that high? That's ins Dude, maybe the rival actually is supposed to be the Charmeleon champion. and Wartortle, respectively. We also find our last so-called exception that proves the rule. Channeler number 22, who holds the honor of being the highest ranked trainer with only two Pokemon in their party. Jesus Christ, he's so high. I, I, the God, so the Ghastly and a Haunter, isn't it? Here on out. Then we find the other two SSN rivals. Ivysaur leading the pack as usual, followed by Blaine. Sabrina, like before, is not taking her proper place in the gym leader rankings. Damn, Bla dude, Sabrina's gonna be like, Sabrina's straight up gonna be in the Elite Four, I Rounding bet. Rounding out A plus tier, there's the gym battle against Giovanni and Lorelai, who actually managed to gain 31 places this time around. Of course, she's still just as prone to drawing out battles with rest as she ever was, so I have a sneaking feeling that my new Alo system is a little too forgiving of her cowardly tactics. Yo, these Elite Four members aren't as strong as we expect them to be, I'm just saying. Anyway, finally in S tier, we see the last two Pokemon Tower rivals, with Charmeleon actually beating out Ivysaur for the first time. I can't believe Tower is in the top 20. And there's Sabrina! Which at last the top 16. So, before we get to the top 16, I want to address one comment that I got a few times on the original video, which is that my AI tournament isn't actually a tournament. That is, of course, nonsense. Round Robin tournaments are absolutely tournaments. You However, tell them! I can understand the concern. These people probably didn't want a big list of win-loss draw ratios, but rather the nail-biting excitement of one-on-one -on -one battles played out in a bracket. So, hey, why not? Rather than going through the rather predictable top 16 in order, Let's instead oh. use the results from our round robin tournament to seed a single elimination sweet 16 bracket. Okay. The winner of that tournament will be crowned the true strongest trainer in all of Pokemon Red and Blue. Let's go! The list of competitors is pretty much what you would expect. Oh, this is gonna be all sick. Three Professor Oaks, nine rivals, Agatha and Lance from the Elite Four, and Sabrina. The only surprise contender is Juggler Number Two from Victory Road. Let's go, Juggler Number Two, baby! Yes, that's my boy. I need you to we'll win, Juggler to Number Two. The first Come on! Is between the one seed champion rival, the one with the Charizard, and the sixteen seed Sabrina. The champion Pidgeot takes out Sabrina's Kadabra. And after some back and forth with Mirror Move. Come on, Sabrina! Come on, Sabrina! You got this! Mr. Mine Come on, BB! Venomoth falls almost immediately, leaving Sabrina with just her Alakazam. Zam's got Alakazam it! Zam's got it! Takes down Pidgeot, yes. and the champion sends out his own Alakazam in response. No! Sabrina then spends the next nine minutes spamming Recover and nothing else. Good job, Sabrina. This you tried. perplexed me for a while, Good job. to the point that I thought there might actually be a bug in my code. However, I think I can explain it. No, it's a tactic. As I mentioned in the original video, the third move selection criteria used by smart trainers like Sabrina will prioritize super effective moves. Alakazam, of course, has none. 
it has three psychic type moves and recover, which is normal. However, it will also deprioritize moves that are not very effective, so long as an alternate acceptable move is available. Acceptable moves in this context are, generally speaking, damaging moves of a different type. In other words, Sabrina wants to deprioritize all of Alakazam's psychic moves, but she needs to find an acceptable alternative first. Recover doesn't qualify because it's not a damaging move. It's just not but working. Psy Wave does because it has a special damage calculation. Jesus as as Christ. Tell, Psy Wave even counts as an acceptable alternative move for itself, meaning Sabrina is recover, successfully boys! able to deprioritize all of Alakazam's moves except we for Recover. We love Recover. Yes, we do. The only option. Psy Wave is a move that's unique to Sabrina's Alakazam, so the Champions doesn't run into this issue and is able to finish off Sabrina with a lucky one two punch. Oh! The next battle oh, damn, is the eight, unfortunately. Oh, wait, we have two champion battles. No, 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 we have a rival versus a rival. This is just before the victory. Oh, no, it's Silvco. Sorry, it's Silvco. Between two of the Silvco rivals, the ones with Charizard and Venusaur. Come on, Venusaur, baby. Venusaur gang, let's go, baby. Venusaur gang. Their Pidgeot take each other down. The Venusaur rival's Gyarados takes out the Charizard's Execute. Yes. Only for it and Growlithe to fall to the Charizard rival's Gyarados. No. Al Why would you send out Growlithe, you dumb AI? Alakazam takes down Gyarados. Yeah. And the Charizard rival sends out... Oh, God. Is this entire tournament just oh, going to no. be Alakazam dittos? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. These Alakazam oh, no. don't spam recover quite as much as Sabrina does, but this match does last for about 10 more minutes before Jesus the Charizard Christ. rival finally gets his sweep. We never... No! Even see his Charizard. No, that's so sad. Next up, Professor Oak with a Blastoise against the Professor Oak, the first Oak appearance against wait, Silphco rival. Silphco rival, who also has a Blastoise. After stalling for a while, Oak's Tauros takes down the rival's Pidgeot in a single attack, only to fall to Growlithe. Let's go, baby. Growlithe falls to Executor, but no, not before no. taking out a big chunk of its health. Nice. The rival Come follows on. it up with Executor who simply doesn't have the moves to be able to finish off the Executor. Alakazam on, decides he finishes harder. the job, only to quickly fall to Oak's Arcanine. Blastoise oh my god, he's got blasted! The dog, Blastoise! Leaving us with the Blastoise ditto. Even with the health Blastoise advantage, ditto. Though, Oak's Blastoise manages to lose the fight. But what? with another Pokemon, his Gyarados, up his sleeve, oh, Oak is yes. able to clinch the victory. Okay, Oak wins against Silphco rival. Next is Oak with the Venusaur against the Victory Road rival with the Blastoise. As you might expect, this battle plays out nearly identically with the only major difference being the rival's introduction of a Rhyhorn in the middle, and at the end, there it is. Yeah, it's not gonna, this is not going to change anything, though, is it? After that nice. comes the juggler number two, baby! That's all we're looking for! That's all you want! Our boy, juggler number two, going up against the literal Blastoise champion. Champion with the Blastoise against our surprise competitor, juggler number two. Come on, come on, juggler number two, baby. Drowsy, Hypno, come on. and two Kadabra. Bad stop, but it's okay. It's okay, we can make a comeback here. Just focus, get your head down, really nail this juggler number two. You got Recall this. from the original video, the jugglers in Pokemon Red employ the rather interesting strategy yes. of switching out their Pokemon every turn with a 50% probability. Switching, Could work. for example, to make up for a type advantage can, of course, be an excellent strategy in competitive Pokemon. He just disabled Recover! Big brain tactics! But, of course, the jugglers employ no such forethought when it comes to their tactics. They merely switch out to the next available Pokemon, regardless of its or the opponent's types. Could this work. tactic basically gives the opponent Head three moves without much benefit to the juggler. Poison gas! This, good, good, good! The fact that the champion has two more Pokemon as compared to the juggler makes it clear that the 15 seed juggler never really had a chance of winning this matchup what? against the two seed, but it's still fun to watch them try. No, 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 he can, he can totally do it. Switch in and out, in. He can still do it. I, I believe in him. He can still win. Well, you, you're not believing him hard enough. Come on, juggler number two. Oh, I believe in you. Died. No, Hypno. Uh, the, the, the juggler actually holds his own for a while, lasting for over eight minutes and taking out three of the champion's Pokemon. But unfortunately, he is simply no match. No! Okay, he took out like most of the team though. Juggler number two, solid attempt there. Next, we have the victory road rival with a Venusaur against the Oak with a Charizard. Charizard versus Venusaur? Okay, I'm pulling for the champion this, this time. This is a pretty familiar battle, but surprisingly, the Venusaur was actually able to take down the Charizard. Yo! Venusaur snipes the Zard? Hyper okay. After oh, that, and never mind. Okay, it died. Never mind. Dude, Oak is cracked. Oak is like winning everything. Oh, we got Agatha here versus a champion fight. Comes the three seed Venusaur champion against Agatha, the ghost type elite four member and a 14 seed. Agatha's Gengar and the champion's Pidgeot trade blow. Agatha has one super potion. What's up with that? For a while, and the Gengar confuses the Pidgeot, but as Pidgeot charges up a Sky Attack, Agatha switches in Golbat. What? Both Pokemon end up confused before. Yeah, I'm confused about that switch as Agatha well. Agatha makes the brilliant decision to use Haze, 
thus curing both Pokemon of their confusion. I didn't even know it did that. By switching the heavily damaged Gengar back in. Which, I get of course, she could have done one throwing. turn ago, alleviating what? the confusion for herself without curing it for Pidgeot, but there's no point no! in criticizing the game. No! Oh, the Hagatha, you idiot. We've all seen much worse. It kind of pisses off ridiculous. her, as she's just barely able to take out the Pidgeot. This success doesn't last long, though, as the champion's Alakazam is able to decisively sweep her entire team. Jesus With Poison Christ. being weak to Psychic, and Ghost having no effect against Psychic in Gen 1, Agatha really didn't stand a chance. No! Come on, Agatha, you could have done better than that. Lastly, in round one... Oh, we got Lance making an appearance here. Have the a Lance versus the champion. Now we're really going to find out, did Blue cheat to get into... Wait, oh no, this is the before victory, victory road. road. rival with the Charizard against Lance, the Dragon-type Elite Four member. This battle ended up being the shortest of the entire tournament, <laughs> at just three minutes and 46 seconds. Lance, Lance is railing him! Oh my god! Gyarados sweeps most of the rival's team before falling to Alakazam, who oh, he also goes down. takes out Lance's first Dragonair. The second okay. Dragonair finishes off Alakazam before losing to Charizard. But then, Lance's Aerodactyl just barely manages to finish the job, earning him the victory. Okay, so we would have known that the Victory Road version wasn't good enough to become champion. On to round two. There's going to be a lot of similar battles in this round, so we won't dwell on these for too long. First up is the one seed Charizard champion against his past self. Come on. No surprise how this come one on. turned out. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, come on, come on. It's literally the weaker After version. That comes Oak with the Blastoise against Oak with the Venusaur. Venusaur Oak, let's go, baby. This one goes exactly how the type matchup implies it. Yes. Should. Next Sick. is the Blastoise champion against Oak with a Charizard. Ooh, who do I want to win here? Blastoise. I want Blastoise champion Oak to win this one. Oak manages to win this one for a spot in the final four. Nice. Lastly, we have the Venusaur champion against Lance. Could Venusaur actually become champion? Props to Lance for making it this far, but I'm afraid there's a reason he's not the Pokemon League champion, and unfortunately, not the champion of this tournament either. No! Our final four ends up being two similar matchups. The Charizard champion against Oak with a Venusaur, and the Venusaur champion against Oak with a Charizard. Wait, so the last of the final match is going to be, it's going to be a duplicate. It's going to be a ditto fight. These two similar matchups actually end in the same way. Against the way the type matchups would lead you to believe. Okay, all right. So the final match is going to be, it's Venusaur versus Venusaur. This is why Venusaur is the best Kanto starter. No matter who ends up being the champion of this tournament, Venusaur is clearly coming out on top. Speaking of champion, we've made it to the final round. Oak with the Venusaur against the champion with the Venusaur. Now we finally get to find out, was Professor Oak canonically stronger than Blue in Generation 1? Let's go, baby! Here we go! This Let's is go. it! Whoever wins this matchup will be crowned the undisputed strongest trainer in all on, of Pokemon Oak. Red and Blue. I want Oak to win this. I want Oak to absolutely slaughter this man. Oak starts out strong taking down Pidgeot with his Tauros. But the champion follows it up with, if not his strongest, certainly his most annoying Pokemon, Alakazam. Alakazam. That's a big problem. Alakazam finishes off Tauros, then spams Rough. recover and a full restore to hold on as it chips away at Executor's health. Ooh, with Executor not good. out of the way, the champion's Alakazam is able to easily finish off Oak's Arcanine and Venusaur. No. Oak's Gyarados. Gyarados just barely holds on after bringing no. Alakazam to the brink of fainting with Hyper Beam. But Take Alakazam him out. Spam Hyper Beam. Spam Hyper Beam. During the recovery time. No! With both Pokemon in the red, he down lives to on a three! Of speed, and Alakazam manages to finish things off with a Psy Beam. No! Which means that, yes, the irrefutably, scientifically measured, absolute strongest trainer in all of Pokemon Red and Blue is the champion rival with a Venusaur. GG's to the winner. Well, as we know, Venusaur is the best saucer in Generation 1, so this makes complete sense. Well, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Make sure you subscribe to the original creator, who's linked in the description. I'll see you in the next one.